Okay, so I've kind of already talked about how different high school was. Uh, I might do a part two on all the fun stuff we've done in high school, but um, for this episode, I'm just going to be kind of talking about uh, junior high or Maple Grove as the cool kids uh, cool kids call it. Um, pretty pretty odd place, but it was it was a fun time. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, um, so for this episode, we're just going to be talking about junior high and how uh, interesting I guess it was. I did kind of talk about this on my episode about Yarmouth, but my my file for that podcast episode got del- got corrupted or something when I tried to edit the audio. So I guess this is it. Um, yeah, didn't didn't really mean for that to happen, but I guess it kind of got messed up. A couple people got their pantaloons in a twist about it too, because I said something. I don't really remember. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so our junior high was, um, was different. Um, kind of put it in perspective, our, I don't know if it was a rumor or not, but our town kind of has the, at one point, um, had like the highest pregnancy uh, teen pregnancy rate in all of, I don't know if it was Atlantic Canada or all of Canada or maybe just the one province, I don't know. Um, I don't know if the kids were just bored or maybe Mr. Bashir's class didn't scare them enough with all his uh, nasty pictures of chlamydia that he would show. So, I don't know. Uh, I guess that was that. So, um, Basically, at Maple Grove, um, you, it it was one junior high, there was a junior high out in the country, and there was a junior high in town, um, the town junior high, um, you could kind of wander, go downtown, do whatever on your lunch break, Maple Grove, you couldn't, um, the only thing you could really do on Maple Grove is you could do one of two things, you could either walk outside, um, like, on the pavement, go in the, uh, go around in a circle you could play basketball uh on our on the crappy on the crappy basketball court you could go into the library and do that or you could sit on the park bench and play uh play with your game boy advance and all the link cables um talk about that a little later um yeah so yeah there wasn't really a whole lot to do um Grade seven, um, the the only thing that I ever really did in school was I, um, I played music on lunch hour because I was not athletic. I'm still not athletic, um, so I would just kind of go into the music room and play them, toot my own horn all day, literally. Um, that's where that's where all the cool kids cool kids hang out. Um, yeah, so basically you could play in the music room, um, you could go to the art room, do that, uh, like draw weeby dragons or something like that. Um, so the first year of junior high, um, there's a few different clubs I kind of want to talk about. There was one, uh, we basically had a Lord of the Rings club, um, it was exactly what it sounds like. There would be these little stinky nerds going into the library, and they would literally draw out scenes from the movie. Now, this was back in 2002, so the first movie just came out. second one was about to come out. Uh, yeah, so it was like just before the second one came out or right around the same time. Um, there was about five or six of them. They would go into there. They would write up little scenarios about how they thought the next battle would go. Um, just some really, uh, just some mega poon slayers in the library. Just, just talking about Lord of the Rings all day. Um, there was the what I what we used to call the I Need a Life Club, which was basically. Um, Kids would bring in their Game Boy Advances and their Link cables, and they would play. Uh, they play Zelda. There was like a multiplayer Zelda that they would play. 
uh, it was basically the the most alpha males in school Kyle Kyle Brandon and Matt and maybe Derek he still denies it to this day but I definitely think he was one of those people um, they'd sit on the park bench every day and play Zelda Four Swords Adventures and that was that was what they did um, now there was a few other things that people did like that like um, after that some of the I guess the cool kids decided to actually bring in their Game Boys and play it and then it kind of caught on and people did it a lot more um, I, I was poor so I didn't have a Game Boy Advance until I got insurance money from breaking breaking my kneecap oh, maybe I'll talk about that in another episode but yeah they uh play the Game Boy Advances all day. Um, there was another, uh, there was another popular game among the girls in our school. Um, basically, it was a game of who could, who could get pregnant the quickest. Um, there was a few, a few, uh, a few champions on that. Um, uh, one girl got pregnant in grade seven. Um, I know a couple girls that got pregnant. Um, didn't uh I, I don't know if they they gave them up or or whatever but anyways uh yeah there was there was there were some girls there that saw more more uh, i guess to put it politely they saw more dick ends and weekends so that was that was something else now another thing about maple grove is that um Actually, before I go into that, I want to talk about one one dude in my class. His name was David, and he was the the strangest kid I've ever met. He he failed the year before, and he was in the French class. And then he got moved over to my class. Like he he gave up on the French, which was weird because it's usually the French that give up, not the English. That, whatever. Um, he gave up on the French speaking, went back in the English class, and he did the weirdest stuff. Like he would take permanent marker and I mean not permanent marker but he took like marker and he uh, he would like draw a watch on his wrist and he would every five minutes he would like erase what was on his wrist and then he would draw the clock again and apparently that's something that he did fairly often the year before um, so yeah he failed grade seven um, the other thing I want to touch on is that in our class, in our, in our school, there would be people who would fail grade seven, but the people who would fail the most would be like in grade eight. Grade eight took out more kids than the Scarlet Fever. Um, basically, grade seven wasn't that hard, but once you got out of grade seven and got on the grade eight, that's when I guess most of the kids would fail. I don't really know why. Um, and I'm the biggest retard on the planet, and somehow I still passed. So, if you failed grade 8, well, congratulations. You're, you're dumber than Zeddy. Now, there was one guy in my class. His name was Nelson. Um, he might have been the biggest twink on the planet. Um, I, I don't even know what twink means. I think it just means, like someone who has too much sass on him he had way too much uh yeah he, he was just a prick um he'd be the kind of kid that would uh he'd make fun of you for going to play music on your lunch hour he'd be like man you guys are, are nerds or whatever for playing music or trying to actually get a skill but then all he would do on lunch hour would uh walk around the circle because there was really nothing else to do um but I guess he ended up being the alpha and showing showing me who was who in the end because he joined the volleyball team and apparently that was that was the cool thing to do. Um, so yeah, um, he was also really weird. Like he, uh, like the big thing when I was in junior high was like getting a GameCube because nobody really, at least in my class, nobody cared about like a PlayStation or Xbox or PC game and it was all about the GameCube and. He knew I wanted one, but 
but I couldn't find one. So he would like went up to me one day. He was like, "I get a GameCube or something stupid like that." When he doesn't even play the game, he just kind of rub it into my face. I don't really understand why he did that, but uh, yeah, that was that was the bullies. That was the level of bullying you got in Maple Grove. Some kid tried to tried to up your game by saying he had a GameCube, which was not really the most intimidating thing to do, but I guess that's that's the level of bullies you had in Maple Grove. Now, I wasn't a bully or nothing like that in Maple Grove, but there was there was definitely a few kids that really kind of deserved to be bullied cause just because they were the most massive wieners on the planet. Um, there was one little kid. Um, I, he's 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 a nice guy. Like I've, I've I, I liked him, but he was he was a wiener. Um, there was one kid named Francois. Um, my buddy Tyler. He kind of picked on him a lot. Like one time he. Uh, it was snowing one day, and Francois was going up the hill, and Tyler pushed him down, and uh, pushed him down the hill. Like we had a hill going up to the soccer field and there was like a chain link fence up there and Tyler chased him up a hill pushed him down or something like that he, he fell down and then Tyler was like watch out for the snowball watch out for the fallen snow and he picked up a giant snowball and just and just huffed it at his face just because it would be funny and to be fair it really was funny so good on you Tyler um, you, you bully where people really need it and I applaud you for that now, to kind of talk about the teachers that we had in school, um, there was two teachers I kind of want to talk about. Um, there was, I, I, I don't really want to point them out, but, well, I won't say their last names, I'll just call them um, two of them. There was Mr. D, he was the French teacher, and there was Mr. W. Or Mr. Yeah, I'll call him Mr. W. He was the music teacher. Um, Mr. D, the the French teacher, um, he he was always accused of like being like the world's most massive pedophile, and it didn't really help that he was French. It just kind of gave off some uh, I don't know, but just just a creepy old French guy. Um, our French class, all we literally did was color the entire class um, because he was too lazy to teach us any actual French. He was like, oh, here's a word search with French words in it. And yeah, that was basically all there was to it. Um, there'd be a few times when he would just stare at girls in the class and then they would freak out and just say, why are you staring at me? Why are you staring at me? And he would just kind of stare back at them. Um, with his beady little brown eyes. Um, yeah, it was just... I, I don't think he was a pedophile or nothing like that, but he definitely definitely kind of gave off um, that sort of vibe. Um, now, there was Mr. W. Um, he, he pretty much had an anxiety attack every time we had music class with him because our class was so terrible at music that it wasn't even funny um i don't mean to to brag about it or anything but there was like three good musicians in our class i was one of them um there was jamie the bass player um there was a couple clarinet players that were okay and then we had um had a decent drummer um but everyone else um sounded completely awful uh to to put it into perspective, um, each grade you have like a grade 7 learner book, a grade 8 learner book, a grade 9 learner book. Um, all through junior high, our single class never even got past the first, the seventh grade learner book. Um, so he would pretty much have an anxiety attack every time our class went in. And I could play high school level music when I was in grade 8, which isn't really much of a brag. It was just something that I like to do, so I practiced a lot, um, but everybody's mind was blown when I did a solo for 
uh, Louie Louie, like that old song from the 50s. Um, so yeah, they, they said I was the world's most amazing trumpet player. And I ended up playing the trumpet in front of the school, like solo a couple times for the Memorial Club. Um, I might talk about the Memorial Club in a, in a different episode here, but yeah, that was basically all there was to it. Now, this music teacher, he actually had my brother as a music teacher once and my brother he was he says he did all these things I don't know if I really believe him um, he said he used to put tennis balls in his trombone and launch them at the teacher I don't know if I really believe that but um, the music teacher did go on stress leave that year so I'm inclined to believe that my brother was just kind of a prick um, and he said that one time he he poured, he went to the bathroom and poured in a, peed in a bottle and then poured the pee down the trumpet or the trombone of someone else so that when they put the trumpet down, it spilled all over them. I don't really know if I believe that, but that's what my brother says happened. Um, but yeah, not, not really sure if I believe that or not. Um, now we did have a few exchange students in in our school um, I'll tell you one funny story that happened with him we had one guy his name was John Lee um, I think that was just his Canadian name, Canadian name. Um, I think his actual name was Jungen Lee or something like that um, the funniest thing I think I ever uh, ever did was him I was, I was like we were asking him Korean names or something like that. And someone's like, hey, what's the Korean name for, for food? What's the Korean, like they're asking him like some other stuff as well. They were asking him like how to swear in Korean and all that type of stuff. And then one time during class, I was just like, hey, John, what's the Korean, what's the Korean word for gay? And he just stood up and he said in his accent, he's like, oh, the Korean word for gay is Zeddy. So he kinda he kinda Korean barbecued me on that one. Now, um there was one guy in my class, um, in grade eight. Um he he kind he was one of those kids that kinda watched Eight Mile a few too many times because he thought he was gonna be like the next M M&M. and M. Um his name was Kyle, so you know he's he, he's the biggest biggest alpha male on the planet when your name's Kyle um, when we were in grade 8 uh, he failed the year before and he was just kind of one of those kids who thought he'd be he was tough threatening the, threatening the teachers and all that kind of stuff um, one time he comes in the class he's like uh, he, he bragged about bringing, bringing girlfriends over to his house and sleeping with them and like man I'm only he asked me when I was going to him like man I am 13 I don't even think my pair has has dropped yet because I definitely had a very squeaky voice so none of that none of that kind of thing interested me back then I was I just wanted to go home and play Wind Waker um, so he, he was like uh, I, yeah I was like yeah I'm not don't even ask me about that. I don't want to do any of that type of stuff right now I just wanna I just wanna play Bionicle and and do my homework he's like man you're a little you're a little uh, you're a little wiener if you don't want to do that so two weeks later he told me <laughs> he got a girl pregnant um, so I guess uh, yeah not not the smartest move he ended up dropping out of uh, school in the ninth grade um, yeah, he he wasn't wasn't the brightest kid. Last I heard, um, he he got a job at Boston Pizza once, and he would like eat the raw chicken there. And my buddy Travis would be like, "Hey man, you can't that stuff's raw, you know." And he'd be like, "Yeah man, it tastes. I like the way it tastes. Tastes good." So he likes to he uh, yeah, it's he he's. He eats his food the same way he uh, he procreates. He doesn't he doesn't uh, he doesn't 
um, prepare his bird safely. So, yeah, he, he gets knocks up women and he gets salmonella. So, yeah, um, I can't really think of any other stories there. Um, there's a few uh, other instances. We had one bus driver. His name was Donnie. Um, he was kind of one of those old bus drivers that was like, he was kind of cool, but like looking back on it now, you're like, oh, he was kind of a prick. Um, like one time my brother told me the story about how he called a kid a fruitcake on the bus or something like that and then he got in trouble by the school board so uh the next day he uh he was like well i guess there should be some apologies being made um uh i i called little timmy over there fruitcake but honestly timmy maybe uh i wouldn't have done that if you weren't acting so gay <laughs> so <laughs> it was really kind of funny that way um he would also yell at the Korean girl named Sally, um, yelling at her because she couldn't speak any English. Um, so yeah, he was just a real prick. Um, yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's the only kind of stories I have about Maple Grove this time. Um, mostly because I can't remember a lot of the stories. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of running out of stories, uh, from my childhood to just repeat on this podcast. I'm probably going to start diving in the topics that aren't really memories because I can only go so far um I don't know if you guys want me to talk about a topic let me know or if you want to if you want to actually do a podcast with me um let me know I'll just send you a I'll just do a podcast with anybody you know what screw it um I'll send you the link to my anchor uh, to my anchor account, you can link up with me if you have a if you have a microphone like a microphone with a not a microphone uh, if you have a headphones with a microphone built into it and a smartphone and you download the Anchor FM app. That's literally all you need to do to be on a podcast with me. So yeah, let's do it up. Um, just let me know. Okay, thanks. See you later.